Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome to the first video of Tuesday. This may be the only video. It's a very important one. Four Battlegrounds is one day away and preparation obviously is an important thing. Now we do have the information of what is uh, coming on for Season 7 and 8 but I want to make this video focused on Season 6 and making that uh, all important preparation and as well to get out of the blocks with getting into Victory Track and up the ladder. Because that's the most important thing. So as we know, we have got, first of all, Conflictor. Every seven seconds, the next debuff triggered by the attacker is immediately purified. Each time this effect triggers, the defender gains 50% of a bar of power. So here's the thing. When it's saying the next debuff, now you have to really kind of like have a look whether or not this is something that the more debuffs you have on the defender, will it indeed trigger more frequently and also as vibrantly and when i say that and the the word vibrantly is like well here's the thing you could see that the enemy builds a lot of power and builds it very quickly or can be very annoying if you are using champions that trigger debuffs more frequently and let's face it seven seconds maybe the difference between you being slapped by an sp2 and sp3 or you know a suicide mastery triggering off something so that's something as well to consider we're going to have a look at that in a minute of like some of the best counters, best defenders that maybe play into this, and a few other things as well. Arms race is the other thing as well. Both the attacker and the defender gain a passive fury during their special attacks based on the defender's power. While below one bar of power, they gain plus 25% attack. 75% attack was one and two. And above two bars of power, they gain 200% attack. Now, there could be several ways of looking at the best counters, the best defenders, and stuff like that. I think the attacking side of things, the conflicted counters, are going to be champions that we're going to refer to in a minute as maybe some of the better options out of it. But it is very difficult to kind of think like, okay, well, as it says here, and as I've put in a spreadsheet, which is linked in the description if you do want to check this out, that if, and again repeating what I've just said, in seven seconds, every next debuff triggered by the attacker is immediately purified. And each time this effect triggers, the defender gains 50% of a bar of power. So you have to be inflicted with a debuff. So what is it best to avoid? I guess champions that will inflict a debuff. But as I said, if you're facing against someone with suicide masteries, you're going to start off with a poison or a bleed effect on you. Which then, you know, part of this particular thing is already has something that's going to be triggered off. So you have to be very careful. But also you could look at champions that would um, shrug off effects, which may or may not count. But at the same time, if you look into the likes of Atuma and Baron Zemo, there could be good ways of having those as defensive-based options. They're going to trigger off some, you know, decent potency, but also be frustrating. And also Kingpin as well. So those are but some of the options we could uh, look into. But also you could look at it from a different angle. And your counters for this could be something of, okay, well, if it's likely you're going to gain a bar of power as a result of this conflictor triggering off and giving you uh, giving your defender some power, then how do you as attacker counteract that? Do you use champions that power control? And again, this is the thing about using champions that may be best suited to deal with power control options or power building options to then control them uh, thusly. So therein lies a tricky one, isn't it? Like, here's the thing. You may want to look at, first of all, let's kind of talk about the defending options. Defending options could be champions that are more rugged, annoying, frustrating. Apocalypse in defense. King Groot in defense. Yeah, there's some great counters to that. Nimrod in defense. Well, there's so many others. Kingpin, as we said, in defense. Atuma in defense. Lots of different options that would trigger off something or they would purify something. Or they'd be more rugged. Because here's the thing, I don't know, I don't, and Ebony Moore is another option. I don't think that this plays out the same way. Once I, first time I looked at this, I thought, okay, well, if it's a champion that always pur purifies debuff effects, then each time you are triggering off getting that conflicted, therefore, you are literally, you know, triggering off left, right, and center the ability to power gain. So that may be not the way of looking at it, but there's definitely a good cause of going, hey, do you have a frustrating defender that always seems to give you some sort of like kill in uh, Battlegrounds? It may be the best thing to kind of like shoot for that one uh, and, and just go for it. So, you know, your Ebony Moors, your Penny Parkers, your Gallons, for example. There's Penny Parker down there. Penny Parker's a great option. Um, your, uh, your Havocs, to name but a few. Mole Mans, maybe... 
Nick Furies, of course, because everyone does that. Bishop, of course, that's another kind of great option. Um, and as well, Crossbones. Crossbones could be quite quite cool. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's tons of options. Toad, Wolverine, uh, Weapon X. You know, Again, the list goes on with that one. But I think the way to kind of look at this is how you deal with the attacking side of things. Because every seven seconds, you gain 50% of, bar, of a bar of power. Now, if we're talking about potentially a champion building up and say holding on to the special attack, you are building up over the course of seven times, seven times six, 42. My head maths is not with me at the moment. Um, but yeah, 42, over 42 seconds, a enemy could have built three bars of power, which means that if you're unable to control it by the means of power control, power steal, power, uh, power lock, uh, power burn, if you're unable to do that, then you're going to be slapped by an SP3. And let's face it, in those 42 seconds, that's pretty much going to be the time frame you want to be able to end the fight as quickly as possible because you want to be getting as much points as possible. So how you have to look at this um, particular... And look, uh, we're basing this on <laughs> champions not throwing special attacks. And I've been in situations where over 42 seconds, champions have not thrown special attacks. So you need some counters. And I would say consider power control options or champions that are not going to trigger any type of debuffs or less than likely trigger debuffs that could be good kind of counters for this. So of course if you get hit by small arms it's not going to be too great especially if the enemy champion has got three bars of power. So the best thing you can do is suppress that power or take it for yourself. That's why if you've got Doctor Doom and play into the second part of the node which is that small arms build up to an sp3 but keep it on you it's going to mean that you're going to have that power quickly and champions that build power very quickly like vision arcus like purgatory like um uh sorcerer supreme and also some of the ones we're going to mention right here either you're power controlling or you're keeping power on you as much as possible to damage as much as possible uh, to the enemy do avoid those debuffs because, look, you know, yes, it will power up the enemy, but at the same time, it's it's going to be down to you. I'm sure we're going to still going to see Archangel, Human Torch, which you still could use with Nova Flame as the pre-fight. So there's a lot of things open for that particular champion. But you could use counter options, counter options like Doctor Doom, Infamous Doom, Penny Parker, Black Widow, Clairvoyant. And as long as you say in the Poison Curse, Guillotine 2099 off an SP1. Vulture, Nimrod with a Blitz, Blitz Protocol. So if you rotate to Blitz Protocol, uh, you're able to get the uh, Power Lock. But do bear in mind, it is a debuff, so it could it could trigger off. Mysterio has power control elements to the champion. Hawkeye with the SP1. Uh, Rogue with an SP2. Dormammu with his, I think it's combat ending mediums, but I can't remember if it was mediums in his hit. Uh, Psylocke, Dr. Voodoo, Doc Ock, Vision, Age of Ultron, Vision Classic. There is so many to name right here. There's there's tons of options. Suppression you could look at. Suppression debuff. There's also if the enemy champion is going to have power, is going to have power, yeah, have power and throw specials more regularly and more frequently. Then look at to have champions like Spider Ham, Future Ant Man, Yellow Jacket, Ant Man as well. The other way to look at it is if you want champions that, uh, and if you're able to rotate around not throwing debuffs on, you could do so many kind of like bits of damage, Colossus, Odin, Storm Pyramid X, Hulk Immortal, How the Duck, Super Scroll, Silver Warrior, Silver Warrior, uh, Silver Surfer, uh, Corvus, providing you don't do armor breaks, Ant-Man, uh, Spider-Man Supreme, uh, Venomple, but do watch out for bleeds. Falcon as well. And the, the way that I'm kind of like coming across with both, with this one is that, this is about champions that would less than likely, yes, some of them would throw debuffs, but less frequently. Yes, you're going to have to watch out with the likes of parry, but you're going to have to time that in well enough to kind of avoid it. And I would say because there'll come a point you're over-reading into it, it may be difficult to kind of go like, oh, okay, well, um, I'm worried about throwing a debuff here or there. So you might have to, if you focus more on your in intercepts rather than anything, could be quite good for you um, to have less chance of powering up the enemy. But at the same time, if you're going up against champions with easy SP1 rotations, then you could have a bit of fun with this one. I guess it's just down to you as to how you plan to take on this particular node. And this particular prep, you know, when we come to test this out uh, this week on Wednesday, then tomorrow, then it's going to be all about, okay, well, what's going to work what's not 
Is the enemy champion powering up too quickly? How do you deal with that one? Is it through power control? Is it a case of waiting for the champion to throw specials? Do you suppress it there and then just so that you can be quicker on your pace? And that's one thing. Do bear in mind, it's not just about trying to avoid special attacks and also you know, make sure you've got a lot of health, but also being quick about it. A lot of times I've played terribly, but I, the reason I've won is not because I've waited around to try and make sure I've been evading special attacks, is I've been quick. The quicker you are sometimes, the biggest chance you have at a W. Not always the case, but sometimes it works. So I guess um, you know this is down to you. Throw this out there for you to take a look at. If there's uh, anything that you uh, like, then uh, set up a deck around some of these champions, especially from an attack and defense perspective. And that's been the video. I thank you very much for watching. And also check out some other content located on screen right about now. And I'll see you in the next video whenever that will be. Cheers, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.